scientist in charge of, uh, I was the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. <laughs> sure if the eruption is over. I'm trapped here in uh, some kind of military installation in some sacred part of Colorado. <laughs> We've got no food. We've got no power. And uh, the asphalt has uh, contaminated the water supply. <laughs> the air is so thick with that we can barely breathe. Yellowstone were blissfully unaware that it was volcanic. After all, where was the cone-shaped volcano, like Mount St. Helens or Vesuvius? They didn't realize that they were actually standing on top of it, that beneath their feet was one of the largest volcanoes in the world. The truth is, we were only just beginning to understand the workings of the park ourselves. And Virgil, the virtual geophysical imaging laboratory, well, that was going to help us. Or at least, uh, that's what our boss, Michael Eldridge, tried to persuade the press. With it, we can input data from seismometers, GPS instruments, and video cameras strategically positioned around the park to produce a living, breathing 3D model of what's happening here at Yellowstone. Virgil can also help us to understand the park's beating heart. The vast reservoir of red-hot molten rock that lies just a few kilometers beneath where you're sitting now. The sleeping dragon that powers all of the geysers and hot springs, mud spots and steam vents that draw people here in their millions every year. Maggie Chin, KCVZ News, Salt Lake City. Hello. Hello. Your model is very impressive, sir. Oh, thank you, Miss Chin. My question is, will it help? Help what, Miss Chin? Well, in the last decade, we've seen more and more ground uplift at Yellowstone. Twelve feet, I believe, is the conservative estimate. Well, that estimate is not conservative. Nonetheless, many of your colleagues in the scientific community believe that it's one of many signs that an eruption is coming. I'm going to let Rick Lieberman, scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, deal with that one. Rick? Thank you. Uh, this is a sequence of Yellowstone's geological behavior over the past 100 years. Okay, here we go. You see, what, what we have beneath our feet here at Yellowstone is a, is a type of volcano, a type of hidden volcano, uh, referred to as a, as a restless caldera. Uh, caldera, because you'll note it resembles the shape of a uh, cauldron, and uh, restless because it spends much of its life doing what, what you see it's doing right here. It's huffing and puffing as the magma and the hydrothermal systems beneath the ground rise and fall uh, for reasons that we actually don't fully yet understand. Uh, this uh, uplift that you've mentioned, Maggie, is very simply just a part of everyday life uh, here at Yellowstone. So we're definitely not looking at an imminent super eruption. Let, let, me, let me say this. The chances of a uh, so-called uh, super eruption are on the order of you know, something like one in six hundred thousand. In fact, it's it's more than twice as likely that an airplane will crash into your backyard. So. Haven't we just seen extra ground uplift at Norris? Yes, yeah, we we have as a matter of fact, but uh, that may well be uh, hydrothermal, you know, a build up of uh, a build up of water. I'll tell you what, Miss Chin, you give me ten bucks right now, and I will offer you odds of 600,000 to one. So uh, if this thing does go up, you, you make a killing. <laughs> Look, as Eldridge said, it is a tool. Oh, come on, it's unreliable. We're not relying on it. Hey, what was that? What that, was that? that? That was a press conference. That was a joke. We were unveiling Virgil. What, what do you want me to say? You know, hello, everyone, this is Virgil, and it frankly has no more of an idea of what's going on down there than we do, but thank you for coming. <laughs> Buckle up. 
Uh, we check out the busted seismometers. I'll get there tomorrow. It's, here's the point. We could have replaced all of those seismometers for the money spent on virtual. That's the point. Yeah, this big V will have its uses. I'll see you soon. Good to see you, man. See you, pal. Listen, I, I need the uh, coordinates of the Taiwan quake. Yeah. Kaohsiung region. Yeah. Hey. Five seven. Yep. Three three. Okay. This thing takes up far too much space, you know. You tell me. Pumice, it comes from deep inside a volcano and it's so hot the rocks are melted. But when the volcano blows up, it's blown high into the sky. And guess what? It floats. Oh, that's my coffee. How many that? It floats. Okay, Paul, that's enough. Hey, I found out about flights. They said it's fine at seven months. Oh, come on, Fee. Honey, we just flew to Yellowstone back. Yeah, I know, but that way you were with me, and B, you weren't in the air for like 11 hours. Well, I don't get to see my mum this side Christmas, do I? Sure, nothing major. Okay, what do we got? Be in touch. 7.9, 10 kilometers beneath the South Arm Fork. Okay, I'm running a simulation. 6.9 at what? 10 kilometers beneath the South Arm Fork. That's confirmed, 6.9. Standing by for more data. Look at the red can images of the fishing bridge area. Over, say, say the last five minutes. so far. All from the fishing bridge area of the park. As well, 43 people have been taken to hospital with various injuries, some of them life-threatening. I'm going to hand you over now to Mr. Rick Lieberman of the USGS, then we'll take some questions. Rick? The earthquake of 6.9 on the Richter scale occurred at 12.13 local time, centered at a depth of 10 kilometers beneath Mount Sheridan, at the southern end of Lake Yellowstone. The earthquake triggered a landslide off the South Arm Fork, which in turn caused the tsunami wave to hit the northern shore here a few minutes later. All indicators suggest that this quake was not volcanic, but was, was tectonic in its nature, caused by a grinding together of the Earth's plates along a known fault line. The pattern of aftershocks of decreasing magnitude is consistent with this type of seismic activity. Any questions? Is it true Old Faithful has stopped? Uh, yes, that, that is true. However, uh, ground movement can both block and unblock hydrothermal features. Has there been any effect on the uplift in Norris? No, 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 not that we've seen at all, no. Are you still sure that there isn't going to be an eruption, Mr. Lieberman? Uh, as, I, as I've said, Ms. Chin, this earthquake was not caused by volcanic activity, as far as we know. We are increasing our alert status to yellow, which, uh, as you know, does mean watch. Yeah. Does that mean you're not ruling out an eruption? Uh, look, Miss Chen, Yellowstone has sometimes as many as 3,000 earthquakes every year. 
none of them followed by eruptions. Now, everything points to this being a one-off tragic accident. The truth? We, uh, we had the Hebgen Lake earthquake in 1959, a couple of miles from Yellowstone. 7.5 in the Richter scale. Massive landslide, 29 dead. And it didn't indicate a damn thing. Again in 1975. Mag 6, it didn't either. I mean, hell, I'm a politician, not a scientist. The USGS guys tell me it's another Hebgen Lake. I gotta take their word for it. You know? You go on the available facts. Problem was that, uh, in the place the size of Yellowstone, we, um, well, we didn't have all the available facts. Richard Lieberman, YVO. Oh, hey, it's me. You, uh, you better take a look at KCVZ News. All right, we'll do that. Thank you. I'll call you back. I think we have Bye. a reason to be concerned. Maggie, I think that we ought to make a clear distinction between a regular volcanic eruption and a <coughs> eruption. Mount St. Helens was the most violent eruption in American history. It killed 57 people, and it erupted about one cubic kilometer of volcanic ash. Watching the great man, man. Yeah. Oh. Now, let's say that, uh, this cube here represents the amount of oh, wow. volcanic material <laughs> ejected by Mount St. Helens. Now, in volcanic terms, it's a tiddler. Krakatoa. Oh, what? A tiddler. The Indonesian volcano that erupted in 1883 was 17 times larger than Mount St. Helens, killed 36,000 people. And it's represented by this cube here. Hmm. Finally, we have this. This is two and a half thousand times the size of Mount St. Helens. This is a supervolcano. This is currently sitting underneath the ground at Yellowstone Park. And when was the last time one of these super eruptions happened? About 74,000 years ago, in a place called Toba, on the other side of the world, Sumatra. Now, the volcanic eruption there was so vast, it created a volcanic winter, plunged the world into darkness, and all but wiped out the human race. Missed one, though, didn't it? And Yellowstone has produced eruptions on this sort of scale before? Oh, yes, three times in the last two million years. And you think that the activity that we're seeing there right now may indicate that it's about to happen for a fourth time? Oh, God. Yes, I do believe that these events are cyclical. Three caldera-forming eruptions in the last 2.1 million years means, on average, one eruption every 600,000 years. And we haven't had an eruption like that at Yellowstone for 640,000 years now. In other words, we're overdue. No. Yes, I believe the warning signs are there. Oh, jeez. I believe that the warning signs are there, if you care to read them. Thank you, Dr. Wiley. You are Thank well, you, Dr. Dr. Wiley. God. I know he's your brother-in-law, Rick, but uh, the guy's a total numpty. That's not a good thing, right? No, that's not good, no. Is there or is there not a magma chamber oh, underneath God. Yellowstone National Park? Yes, Ken. yes. And is this magma chamber of sufficient size that if there was an eruption there, it could potentially be rated yes. as a super eruption? Exactly. Well, I'm not could. saying that there will. I'm saying no. that there's a chance. No, what you said on television was overdue. Do you know what that was? That's what you said. Overdue, you said. Caught up in the moment, I expect. Well, well you and a few million other people, I guess. Hey, let's not too No, much. sis, I have a legitimate scientific viewpoint. Well, he uh, thinks he's the... Uh, have you ever actually been to Yellowstone? It's not necessary. No. Your excellent website provides all the data I just interpreted. Oh, you, no, you misinterpret. That, that's what you do. Can we not do this now, uh, please? Uh, all I'm saying is you do not go on television and create a mass panic over one potential scenario just in order to sell a book. Oh, come on. You don't go on television and tell everybody that everything's going to be just fine when you know damn well it might not be. Kenneth! No, but just... No! Both of you, I said not now. I'm sick of this. Do you have nothing else? You haven't seen your nephew in over a year. Sorry. Hello, Will. How's school? <laughs> Seamless. Sorry. When I first met Rick, he was a geology student, part of a team studying Yellowstone Lake. They, uh, they discovered this enormous 2,000-foot-long bulge beneath the lake. And we got very excited about it and the press got hold of the story and convinced a lot of people that Yellowstone was going to blow. It created this huge panic and then nothing happened. It made Rick very cautious about what he said in public. And when he got the job as scientist in charge, he, well, he didn't pay even more attention to what he said. So, it's a boy, right? Mm, little boy dragon. Huh. 
And with a new feature. Show me. Some sort of anomaly above the magma chamber just below Firehole Creek Basin. Yeah. Could be water or gas. An intrusion of magma through a fault line opened up by the quake, right? Yeah, impossible to tell till we get a clear image. Oh, thanks. We're still processing all the data from the chaos sunquake. Oh, God, that was days ago. Yeah, I know. Listen, Matt's found a section of dead pine to the northeast of Sour Creek. You got a visitor. <laughs> Hang on. Northeast of Sour Creek Dome along a ring fracture of the Caldera Rim. CO2 or heat? CO2, suffocating the roots. The magma's only two to three kilometers deep at that point. Yeah, or less if it's rising. All right, so who is it? Wendy something from FEMA. Wendy Rice? The undersecretary in charge of the Federal Emergency Management Agency is here. You told her to wait in my office. You're fired, Dave. You can't fire me. Yeah, you're lucky that's true. I'm sorry. Ms. Rice. <laughs> hey, you've caught me off guard. Sorry. Right. I'm Richard Lieberman. Yes, Rick, I recognize you from the television. Oh. Just call me Wendy. Thanks. Well, sorry about the mess, Wendy. No problem. It's been a busy couple of days. Please sit down. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to cut to the chase, Rick. I want to know if we should be worried about this. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> Uh, based on the data that, w that we're, we're getting, uh, yes, there are indicators that there could be an eruption. Or it could be business as usual at Yellowstone. And now, if there is an eruption, then there is a good possibility that uh, it's going to be a moderate one. This isn't enough, Rick. If there's even the slightest chance of this happening, I want to know what that means. I want to know what we can do about it. How much do you know about uh, super eruptions? But super in front of an eruption, I don't imagine it means better. Can I show you something? Please. Okay. See, the magma chamber that sits underneath Yellowstone? Well, here. We think it's roughly the same dimensions as the, the caldera rim itself. We think it's around 40 kilometers wide by 80 kilometers long and around 8 kilometers deep. You think? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a very difficult thing to get a clear picture of. In fact, the only way to even attempt to see a magma chamber is, uh, ironically enough, by relying on earthquakes. Have a seat, please. Thank you. It's called uh, seismic tomography. What we do is we plant an array of seismographs throughout the park, and then when an earthquake occurs, the seismic shock waves from these events travel through the earth. Now, these waves move slightly slower through the molten rock than through the solid rock. So we can use these slight differences in arrival time here at the seismometers to begin to calculate and plot the rough dimensions of the chamber. It's kind of like sonar. And that tells you how much magma is down there. Well, what, what we're trying to determine, essentially, is the nature of this magma. Is it, is it eruptible magma? Is it uh, too viscous? Is it too sticky to go anywhere? Or is it molten enough? Is it liquid enough that it, that it can escape? You know, we also want to know how it's situated in the chamber. Is it uh, kind of spread out in individual pods or uh, pockets throughout the chamber? Or, and this is, this is what we don't want, is it accumulated in one place, sufficient enough that it could trigger a, uh, a super eruption? Okay, let's talk worst case scenario. Okay, well, uh, we have run some projections based on the first super eruption at Yellowstone uh, 2.1 million years ago, mm -hmm. essentially because this is the one we have the most uh, data available on. Mm -hmm. Now, if the next one were to behave in a similar way, then we would be looking at between two and 3,000 cubic kilometers of rock, gas, and ash erupting across the United States in a pattern that looks like this. Zone 1 represents a 100-kilometer radius around Yellowstone. Basically, everything in this area would be completely wiped out by uh, pyroclastic flows. That's the rock and ash that spills from the side of an eruptive column. Um, that is a pyroclastic flow. These surges can travel up to 700 kilometers an hour. So, uh, yeah, these, these journalists were very, very lucky. Mm -hmm. Now, out here in zones two and three, virtually everyone and everything in these two areas will be trapped by extremely heavy ash fall. That's roughly three million people. Yeah. No. And uh, here out in zone four, we're talking about ash fall of around 15 centimeters. Now, 15 centimeters, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you add rain to 15 centimeters of volcanic ash, and that is certainly enough to collapse a roof. Um, and then, you know, in zone five, 
gets down to around five centimeters of ash fall. Uh, this is a huge area covering most of the grasslands, any animals that happen to be grazing there. And uh, that's also the grain belt, of course, so that's all the, the food gone. Uh, and then uh, zone six, we tail down to around a centimeter of ash uh, extending out to the eastern seaboard. A centimeter. I read it takes just one millimeter to close an airport. Yeah. It's, the thing that people don't understand about volcanic ash is it's not like ash from your backyard barbecue. It's rock. It's abrasive. It's pervasive. It's destructive. It uh, shorts out electrical equipment. It clogs machinery. You name it. And it's also extremely tiny. It's uh, 100 microns across. It's so tiny you can inhale it. And when you do, it uh, combines with the moisture in your lungs and forms a cement-like mixture. You essentially drown in what's basically liquid concrete. So. Anyway, uh, that is the, the worst case scenario. So you tell me, I mean, if an event like this were to happen, what is FEMA going to do? Is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Yeah, <laughs> it is going to happen. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? Um, I don't know. And that is the most honest answer that anybody can give you, Wendy. I don't know. said to you before, Ms. Chin. We are with a hydrothermal event, and by no means a surefire indicator of volcanic activity. And certainly not on the scale that you are referring to. Nevertheless, we have issued a code red warning because we don't take these things lightly. Yes. Yeah. Daddy. Yeah. It's getting famous. But you can't rule out a super eruption, can you? Looks good. Strike as likely as an asteroid strike, according to some experts. As unlikely as being struck by lightning, Miss Jin. And how many of us lose sleep over that? That's all the time we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Politics, not enough science. Okay, are we ready to run this simulation? Let's yep. do it. All right. So what I'd like to do is run through a couple of potential scenarios here. Yeah, we've got another quake just over a mile south of Norris. Okay, how big? 1.9. 1.9, okay. Now, this anomaly that we've discovered near Norris, now this could be water and gas, as we know, or worst case scenario, it could be a new pod of uh, eruptible magma. So I want to concentrate our simulations around this area and see what... Uh, the potential damage could be, okay? So, option number one. Let's say that uh, we've got one cubic kilometer of eruptable magma. Okay, and uh, drop it. Run it. No eruption. Based on option one, it seems not. All right, then let's keep all the other parameters the same, uh, but increase it by five, so we'll make it five cubic kilometers. Okay, how big is this? Moderate, BEI-2. BEI-2, in duration? Over approximately three days. With that amount of magma, it could have been a lot bigger. 
Okay, let's increase it by another factor of five and uh, make it 25 cubic kilometers. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Right. So, ten times more magma, a thousand times more eruption. Potentially. Okay, so let's increase it by another factor of five and make it 125 cubic kilometers. This time, let's just, let's just run it this time just from the hydrothermal blast. Sure. Computer glitch? Okay, tell me what we just saw. All right. All right, I'll say it. If we have a reservoir of meltdown there that's larger than 125 cubic kilometers, then this model is telling us that even a moderate eruption near Norris could destabilize the rest of the chamber and trigger a... Uh... BEI-8. Super eruption. <laughs> That's great, great. And if frogs had wings, then they wouldn't bump their little green asses hopping around, eh? <laughs> if, if there was a pocket of melt over 125 cubic kilometers, then a possible eruption at Norris may trigger further eruptions, which maybe, just possibly, could register as VEI-8. Brilliant, great. Jesus, you're letting yourself be spooked by a, by, by a video game. Oh. How close are we here from Norris? Uh, 25 kilometers as per handbook rules. Exciting, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Very exciting. With any luck, it'll erupt when we have such a good view. From Norris. Okay. Hang on. The question is, is this rising magma or is this groundwater? I could make a plausible case for either. Yeah, I know you could. Another 2.2 to the northeast of Norris. That's the third today. So, we got another swarm coming? I need the SRI data for the entire park. Could we get more instrumentation down at Firehole River Basin? Uh, if we steal them from elsewhere. Well, I'll steal them. To a geologist like me, there is only one surefire sign of an impending eruption, and that's harmonic tremor. That's a seismographic reading which indicates that magma is on the move. Even then, though, even when you see one of those, you can't tell how big an eruption you're looking at. But you know that it's coming. Well, on the 26th of June, for the first time, we saw just that. We saw harmonic tremor. And where is it? Norris. Rick, you want to suggest a change of alert? Yeah, you know, another red. That's it's going to create more panic. This is as sure as we get. I know. This, this is eminent. Man. I know. You want me to plug the data into Virgil? Uh, hang it. on, what? hang on. No, really, please, find please. Please. Uh, let, let's do that and just see if it's... Jesus Christ. Look, wait, there's going to be an eruption, okay? We know that. I don't need you to tell me what harmonic tremor means. So no, you, you, you need you need advice on not great to the left people, Look, and you need to let people know. Okay, so I, if I upgrade to a red, everyone's gonna think that we've got a super eruption on our hands, and I am not gonna be held responsible for some kind of mass panic. Oh, wait a minute, it is our responsibility. Uh, it's not shut up, Dave. It's our job, it's our duty to let people know, to tell them what we know, so get your ass off the fence. Well, and, and you tell me what going on TV and telling Joe Sixpack that the end of the world is nigh, you tell me how that's gonna help this situation. What do you think our purpose is here? Okay, listen, I will brief them up, and I will 
brief the state, but just before they evacuate the whole of America, they're gonna wanna know how big the thing's gonna be. Well, at least the ship's got bloody captain. it for weeks and all of a sudden we're going to England. Like that. I'm not supposed to be suspicious. Look, you said that you wanted to go and see your mom, oh, Jesus, right? Jesus, Rick, just be honest with me. I'm being honest Are with you? you. Yes. This is going to be a big eruption. You've got to come with us. Look, it's going to be exactly what I, what I said that it's going to be. You know, this little girl may never meet her father because of the decision you're making right now. Come on, we, we all believe that this is going to be a moderate eruption. And yeah, things are going to go, well, you know, a little crazy in this country for, for a while because everyone's nervous right now. Oh, that's why I, I'd just be happier if you both were, were in London, when, when all that's going on. And then when things calm down, then I'll, I'll come and I'll, I'll see you. Can I go on the plane now? Yes, you're going to go on the plane now. You take care of your mom, okay? Okay. You call me when you get there. I will. Get Love you. Plane. See ya. and I want you to talk to Lisa Cochran. She'll be the one to uh, direct any activity at that point. Okay. Uh, uh, one moment. Bring your center screen volume up. A leaked email seen by KZVZ confirms that the U.S. Geological Survey expects an eruption anytime soon, possibly within hours, and possibly with devastating consequences for America and the world. Oh, God. I'm Maggie Chin with KZBZ News, reporting to you live from Yellowstone National Park. The radius of 100 miles around the park is being evacuated amid scenes of chaos and confusion. Highway 20, the main route linking West Yellowstone to Idaho Falls, is at a complete standstill. Meanwhile, towns and cities hundreds of miles from Yellowstone are under siege as panic buyers stock up on provisions like canned foods and water. Many stores have been forced to close early, prompting fears that violence will soon erupt. We have to show them we will. We'll defend our property and our life. You do realize it's the worst possible way to come out? Guaranteed the mix lies panic. The story's been picked up by all major networks. Not just in this country. All I know, Andy, is it didn't come from my end. No, from Governor Marshall's office, or from anyone here in Washington. Still, we have to deal with it. Sir, this is Rick Lieberman. Hey. Rick, Joe Foster, Secretary for you? Homeland Security. Michael, you know, of course. Hey. Governor Marshall should be joining us at any moment. I expect to see you here. Glad you could join us. Uh, my stage about to be vaporized. I thought I should attend. Uh, Rick, please have a seat. I'll get straight to the point. This leak hasn't just caused chaos here, but around the world. Well, I think it certainly didn't come from USGS. Nor FEMA. Yeah, all right, people. The buck is well passed. Wherever it came from, the media have got hold of it, and now we have got to address it. So, Rick, what I'm going to ask you is very simple. I need you to make a statement ruling out the possibility of a super eruption. Well, ruling it out. Nothing bigger than Mount St. Helens. People would accept that, and it's what the evidence suggests. <sighs> I, well, I can't. A big part. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't say that. Why the hell not? <sighs> because our computer model now suggests that even a small eruption could destabilize the magma chamber and trigger a super eruption. 
Rick, I understand that, but you're talking remote possibility. No, I'm, I'm talking about... What I am talking about are hard facts. Fact one, there are food riots. People are fighting each other to leave the country. Fact two, the dollar is on its knees. Wall Street has crashed. Your country is going down the toilet, and you're telling me you're not prepared to make a statement to help stop that? Please, with all due respect, sir... Uh, Governor Marshall? Rick, every highway, every interstate in Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Iowa, and Nevada is turning into a damn parking lot. Everybody's trying to get the hell away from Yellowstone. Nothing's even happened yet. Yet. But the point is, Rick, even if the worst does happen, we're clogging up the roads, screwing up the airlines, it's, it's not going to do any Wendy, of us Wendy, any I, good. I, I appreciate that, it, Wendy, I do. But you know, until I have something definitive, please don't make me make statements that Rick, are contrary to... You know as well as I do that harmonic tremor can stop as well as start, Mike. It's your responsibility. My responsibility is to tell the public and the landholders what is happening at Yellowstone. You know that. I used to know that. Actually, Rick, as a federal employee, your responsibility is what's best for the country. Now, you have evidence of an eruption, but, and I've heard you say this yourself again and again, chances of a super eruption are virtually zero. Uh, no, no, you are right, but I, I... Then I really don't see what the problem is here. Thank you all. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Tremor's strong and constant. I'm plugging the coordinates into the seismic image. Yeah. Should give us a clearer idea where the magma is. Good. Good. You got everything you need, Dave? I think so. Hey, right. enough to get me going until you guys join me tomorrow. Oh, we'll be out of here first thing. All right. Don't leave it too long. Don't worry. Okay. You out of here? I'm out of here. See you tomorrow. You take care, man. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know... Tricks on TV. America. And the world has been watching with growing anxiety the developing situation at Yellowstone National Park. After a full briefing from the U.S. Geological Survey, and in particular the scientist in charge at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Rick Lieberman, I can assure you all that after weeks of intensive monitoring at Yellowstone, they have gathered no evidence to suggest a so-called super eruption is imminent. Instead, the USGS believes that a small to moderate eruption an event comparable in size to the eruption at Mount St. Helens in 1980 may be due. At this moment, we are taking the appropriate precautions in line with the scale of eruption. The evacuation of the Yellowstone vicinity is currently underway. For those in states bordering Wyoming, we ask you to follow standard state advice, remain indoors, seal all doors and windows, and stock up on sufficient food and water for three days. I ask my fellow Americans to stay calm, and to use your usual good sense at this time. Thank you. Mr. Lieber, Mr. Lieber, Mr. Lieber, Mr. Lieber, up until now, you've been extremely measured in your statements about Yellowstone. Do you agree with Secretary Foster in what you just said now? as you sitting in the back of the plane. I recommend a sweet publishing deal a TV star like you. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I take it you had a gun to your head this afternoon? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You could say that. Fiona and William? Oh, they're on a plane to London. Oh, see so ya.
here that could affect the flight path and safety of this aircraft. Your God has something to yeah, happen. I, I, need, I need to speak to the captain, please. Okay. Hey, Bob. Please do have some sort of haul your way. No problem. Who have I got from U.S. to U.S.? No one. What? I can't get through to the field house at the moment. Hey, Dad. Michael Eldridge is on his way over. Is this uh, vacuum imagery all we have on this? Yeah, and it's only a projection. What? Yeah. Okay, Air Force, I need to play up there as close as I can get. Take a look at this thing. Let's breach the White House and the we know so far. Dave, get back on the line. I want to talk to Governor Marshall in Wyoming, Joe Foster at Homeland, and keep trying the Yellowstone Field Office. And Bob, please get me something else to wear. Sure. Mary? See what's going on. Make contact with Dave. Let him know what's happening. Go. Okay. There are two kinds of volcanic eruptions, red and gray. In a red eruption, the magma, it's actually called lava when it's erupted, flows freely from the ground. Um, you've seen it on TV, this slow-moving flow of molten material. It's damn disruptive in its own way, but slow. Very slow. You can literally outpace a lava flow without breaking a sweat. Not so with a gray eruption. What you have there, you've got magma trapped by overlaying rock, okay? The pressure builds and builds to the point the whole thing blows. The magma under pressure turns to foam and gas, which bursts upward in a vertical column at twice the speed of sound, 50 kilometers up into the stratosphere. were rejected, powered out by something with the explosive force of a thousand Hiroshima bombs. Then the wind carried the top of the column eastwards. Within an hour or so, pumice and dash began to fall in towns hundreds of miles away from Yellowstone. Cody, Billings, Idaho Falls, Bozeman, where Dave was. Can you give me a hand? I've just got a few things in the back of the truck to unload. Thanks a lot. Rick! Rick, it's Dave! Dave! Listen. Guys, this seismic activity, this is me. That's a trivial interruption. Yeah. Matt said it's a single vent. Okay. Dave, I need to determine the size of this vent. I need to do that as soon as possible, all right? All the equipment's down, and Matt can't get a clear view from the chopper. Just put that down anywhere. I'm booting up a link to him. Please, tell me you have a high-speed data port. Oh, yeah, it's right over there. Oh, thank God. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Rick. Yeah. Um, I have a satellite uplink in a few minutes. Should be able to see the ash cloud, and I'll catch in the back. Okay, listen, Dave, I need you to talk to Michael Eldridge in Washington, okay? Get a hold of him, just, you know, inform him about what's happening, and tell him that we need him to declare Red Level 3 emergency, all right? You got that? Red Level 3. I got it. All right, and if this thing gets any bigger, anything else opens up, and I need to know about that, Dave. Will do, boss. Completely wrecked on them. We need to get out of here, boss. Thank 
so far of a major volcanic explosion in Wyoming in the United States. <laughs> Early reports from Wyoming say the eruption has killed literally thousands of people. Many cities near the volcano in the Midwest have been destroyed. Authorities now fear a humanitarian catastrophe on an unprecedented scale. Has reporting a city-wide blackout. I'm getting reports of rolling blackouts west of Yellowstone. Ash fall on power and relay stations. Okay, tell our FEMA offices in Montana, Nebraska, Utah, and the Dakotas to shut down their power grids and switch to backup generators as of now, and make sure those generators are protected against the ash. I'd also advise them to shut down all air conditioning units. The ash will get everywhere. Okay. All federal buildings seem to seal up and start recycling their clear air. Trigger two. I'm now monitoring the eruption column at level five zero zero. The speeds are below about two nine zero. The wind is westerly, but above that it veers around the seven or northwest. Over. Hank, Hank. You got those coordinates? Two nine zero. The wind is westerly. Oh man. It's directly across major commercial air routes. <laughs> I want all airspace across the central USA cleared and put east and west coast on standby. Michael, where is your guy? I need him here. Rick Lieberman? Yes. He's in there somewhere. He was flying back tonight. Okay. Anyone need some blanket? Yeah. There you go. So? It's a, it's a single vent. Single vent. Yeah. So Mount St. Helens, then. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's that? Come on. That, that smell. It's sulfur.
Yeah, yeah, I got it. Does the guy have a zoom? Can you get him to zoom in? Trigger two, can you zoom in? Wait. Oh. Hey, you see that, Michael? Another one. Yeah. Yeah, that's bed number two opened up now. While it was just a single eruptive column, there was still a chance that things would be okay. But the, the second eruption... Clearly, there was so much magma and pressure in the chamber that it couldn't vent through a single column. Instead, the, the whole caldera began to unzip in a series of smaller eruptions. Once that started, we had, we had no idea how long it would go on for. Days, weeks, months. We just didn't know. unexpectedly fly into ash clouds. And on that night, 35 did. And that was just over the US. Flying into one of these ash clouds is, is worse than getting a dump truck full of sand thrown into your engines. Because volcanic ash, well, it's rock. The ash melts over fuel nozzles, a turbine, various engine parts. Uh, the really amazing thing is, is how often the engines survive and, and restart once you get back into, into clean air. So, we were uh, among the lucky ones. We, uh, we got down in one piece. Uh, and by the time we did get down, no one else was taking off uh, anywhere. Stand them down. I need to clear those roads and get me a transportation update on the Coast Guard. The Air Force is evacuating its planes at a basis at Minot, Grand Forks, Ellsworth, Nellis, Kirkland, Offutt, Peterson, Edwards. Is there anywhere they're not evacuating? The East Coast, basically. <laughs> Thank you. Wyoming's declared a state of emergency. They've asked for a federal disaster to be called. Did you get that, Denver? Uh, guys. Hey, guys. Looks like we got another bed opened up. Oh, God. Three beds open. Michael, how bad is this going to get? Find military installations. What are you doing? I'm not here. Okay. Okay. There's a military installation about four clicks this way. They might have a car links to the We're not going to walk. We can't stay here, Ken. Not the trunk. No. Rick. Rick. For God's sake. Rick. It's volcanic ash. We can't go out, Ned. When Vesuvius erupted, the people of Pompeii stayed in their houses. How do we know that, Ken? It was reserved in volcanic ash. Right. We'd already seen from previous eruptions, Mount St. Helens, Montserrat, Pinatubo. We'd already seen that the terrible damage that even small amounts of volcanic ash can do. If it gets in your eyes, it can blind you. When it's breathed in, it will mix with the, the moisture in your lungs to form a suffocating cement. Uh, it's also unbelievably dense. Just 20 centimetres can collapse a roof, half that amount if the ash gets wet. Only people living within a 100 kilometer radius of Yellowstone had been evacuated. Everyone else caught under the ash cloud was in serious danger. Dave, are you getting this? Yeah, I'm seeing it. Two more beds makes five. I'd say the caldera is definitely opening up. What do you think, Michael? I concur with that. Dave, are we losing you? I believe that's here, on the roof. Hold on. 
Sites, spend two, three days in each one. You've got food and water for five days. For one man. <sighs> satellite. eruption will last? Well, this looks about half as big again as the previous caldera, so I think we're, you know, you're looking at something 60 kilometers by 90 kilometers. I mean, we are, we are looking at an event on the scale of the Huckleberry Ridge eruption. The first at Yellowstone. And the biggest. <laughs> and? And, uh, if that ejected 2,500 cubic kilometers of material, then we have to make some kind of estimate for the <coughs> rate of ejection, and then you do the math, and you've got your duration. Give me a figure, Rick. Say that again? A figure. Give me a figure. What, you want me to guesstimate? Yes. I, 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 we're looking at a duration of... Between five and nine days. But it doesn't matter how long it lasts, when you make no mistake, we are looking at a VEI <laughs> well, there's no question anymore. What happened? Uh, I lost the link. There's 
to get that signal back. The EI-8, Michael. Super eruption. Yeah, the worst case scenario. No, it isn't. Well, John Galvin, he was uh, at the field office when he wrote The worst case there. scenario isn't a super eruption. The worst case scenario is a super eruption which goes on and on. If a volcano ejects more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of magma, it's a VEI-8. The magma chamber under Yellowstone has the capacity of 25,000 cubic kilometers. The problem is, we don't know how much of that is eruptible magma. But that, that is what will dictate whether this eruption goes on for days or for weeks. By day three, the volcano showed no signs of slowing. The ash cloud had covered three quarters of the United States. Cities like Chicago, St. Louis, Detroit, Minneapolis, they were at a total standstill. Roads, railways, airports were all closed. The power supplies failed, the water was polluted. Every day it moved eastwards by another 150 kilometers. And all we could do was sit and watch. L'eruzione possa essere contenuta o se ci troviamo di fronte ad uno dei peggiori disastri. We have no clear idea how long it might last or what devastation it might reach. Listen to the advice of your local emergency services. The fault of the Earth is in your hands. Listen to the advice of your local emergency services. Follow it. May God be with you all. Hundreds of thousands of U.S. citizens are homeless as they fled from the ash cloud that now covers three quarters of the country. Thousands of others have been trapped in their homes, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency admits it could be weeks before they can get aid to them. Good morning, sir. Good morning, all. One hour ago, Air Force One took off from Andrews en route to a military bunker in Florida. That information does not leave this room. You can't run a country under several feet of volcanic ash, but some sections of the media will still say she's running away. Now, can we get to business? Wendy, how many people in the fallout zones? About 25 million. <sighs> Casualty estimates so far? In the immediate zone, 90%, excluding those that got out early. In Zone 2, we estimate 10% mortality. That's approximately 35,000 people. Zone 3, 5% mortality. That's 122,000 people. Zone 4, 3% mortality, 85,000 people. Zone 5, estimate 1% mortality, 220,000 people. Total estimated deaths for the first week, 462,000. And that's assuming Zone 1 is clear. These are all from the ash? Mainly either directly from ash inhalation or indirectly from roof and building collapse, uh, power failures, especially in the hospitals, um, ash-related accidents. Sir, standard advice to people was that they store enough food and water for only three days. Today is day three. Then what are we going to do? Uh, oh, excuse me? Wendy Rice. Well, even, it, it, yeah. even when it ends, mm -hmm. we won't be able to fly for weeks with the ash still blowing around. So what are we actually talking about? You find a way. You don't just write off 25 million people. Mm -hmm. Uh, good. Put him through. We've got Rick Lieberman here. Rick, can, can you hear me? Yeah, hang on. Yeah, we got we got you. <laughs> uh, Rick, we have four more vents open since yesterday. All right. Has, has Dave been able to model these? We can't raise Dave. Yeah, one sec. Say that again. I'm sorry, Rick. We we can't raise Dave. Secretary Foster here, Rick. We need to know how long this eruption is going to last so we can plan how to rescue 25 million people. With all due respect, Mr. Foster, I think you've got to change your game plan. I mean, what you have told people is to stay put and to sit this out and to wait for your help. I believe there's simply no realistic way for you to honor that, sir. And I, I, I think that if you do, people are going to die waiting for you. <laughs> You need to retract your advice. You need to retract 
your advice. You need to tell them to come to you. Mr. Lieberman, FEMA will draw on every resource possible to rescue these people. That's our federal obligation. No, sir, this is not about protocol, Mr. Foster. This is this is about survival and nothing more. I mean, when, when this asphalt stops and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and the air starts to clear, the people who are trapped are going to, like, like we are, are going to start walking. They're going to start walking rather than stay here and wait to die. And, and they're, they're certainly not going to make it, sir, without your help. You, you, need, you need to help us. You need to tell us where to walk. We need to have supplies dropped for us along the way. I mean, if we are going to walk for life, then it's up to you guys to help us. Damn it. He wants people to walk through the attic? Is he crazy? cubic kilometers of ash and pumice had been dumped across the United States. Two and a half thousand times more than the fallout from Mount St. Helens. But that was only about 10% of what was in the magma chamber. How much more would come out depended on how much more eruptable magma was down there. The country was already on its knees. Thousands of people dead, millions of others homeless. If it didn't stop soon, well, let's just say we were running out of options. We have just received reports that Mexican authorities closed the border four hours ago. According to aid workers in the area, three million people have now gathered at the Mexican border, many of them without shelter, food, or money. Maggie Chin, KCBC News. They closed the border? To U.S. citizens, yes. That's totally unacceptable. They're condemning people to death. The Mexicans say they can't cope with the numbers. Well, we're going to have to kick some ass. Well, I think the president might feel that right now is a bad time to invade Mexico, Bob. Can we move on? Yes, sir. All right. Our best case scenario is if the eruption stops in two days. If that's the case, access to zones one and two won't be possible until at least three to four weeks after that. So it's unlikely we'll find any survivors. We can start supply drops into zones three through five about two weeks after the eruption ends if the weather is with us. But it's going to have to be piecemeal, depending on whether the satellite can find clean skies for the aircraft. That's too long. What about Rick's walk to life? We can't advise people to walk through the ash. It's just too dangerous. So we're asking people just to sit there and starve to death? There are hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people stumbling around out there looking for help. life. I need to hear a plan out of this room as to how to do that fast. Well, it's still raining. Ash? <coughs> Save the battery. We're gonna need it outside. <laughs> <laughs> Johnson. Yeah. Wouldn't the Air Force be looking for you? 
for me. Yeah, you know, but you've no man behind and all that. That's the Rangers. So the Air Force does leave them behind? I guess. I should have joined the Rangers. Cheyenne's our best bet. <coughs> we should head there. <coughs> FEMA. <coughs> FEMA knows we're here. They'll send somebody. Kenny. FEMA's got 25 million people to save. <laughs> By the time they find us, we'll have starved to death. Not if we hate Johnson. <laughs> Try it, man. <laughs> Definitely a book in this when we get out. <laughs> oh, I don't know. One doesn't like to say I told you so. <laughs> We assumed that when all the vents merged together to form a new caldera, then the pressure would drop and the eruption would stop. That was our thinking. Then, on day seven, our seismographs began to pick up massive quakes, and we realized that the ground within the new caldera rim was beginning to collapse, collapse into the empty space left by the ejected magma. all the major drop points. The Pentagon has 45,000 pallets, 800 planes, and 560 choppers ready to go as soon as it's safe to fly. Information leaflets? With the ash jumpers and all the pallets. You need to see this. Does this mean? This means that the pressure holding the eruption column in the air is beginning to drop. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. the news that America has been waiting for, the end of the super volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park. At 9.17 a.m. local time, the eruption column began to collapse. Ocurrida en el Parque Nacional de Yellowstone, Wyoming, Estados Unidos, parece haber llegado a su fin. This is the whole world's war in the region. There is a central point of change. Huge pyroclastic surges, which radiated out over 100 miles from the base of the column. Overwhelming, the U.S. Air Force drone has been monitoring the eruption. Across America, the overwhelming task of trying to bring aid to the estimated 29 million people trapped by the ash fall begins. Authorities now admit it'll take weeks, if not months, to reach those trapped closest to the volcano. We're going to head back toward the interstate and then turn north. Any abandoned vehicles we come across along the way, I think we should stop and check them for water in the washer bottle, food, anything we can use. Okay. Okay. How far? Uh, outskirts of Cheyenne are approximately 25 kilometers. You know, I've got to say, Richard, this has been a crappy book to us so far. <laughs> Flashlight. Suddenly, utterly, 
irrevocably. The global effects were not fully felt until a month or so after the eruption had stopped. Billions of tons of sulfur dioxide ejected by the volcano wrapped their way around the northern hemisphere, cutting down the sunlight. Within weeks, temperatures started to plummet, as much as 20 degrees in some places. Then the aerosols jumped to the equator and started to cool the southern hemisphere. The monsoon failed, adding drought to the bitter cold. Climatologists say it will start getting better in a few years. But let's just say, I don't think I'll live to see another time. Clear up the scale of what we still have to do all this time on. 80% of the USA covered by ash. 20% rendered unusable or uninhabitable. Cities and towns permanently abandoned. Billings, Cheyenne, Denver, Salt Lake City. I don't know how we kept going, to be honest. I mean, just the animals, the livestock, millions dead, rotted where they fell. And the people. If it hadn't been for Walk to Life, 7.3 million lives saved. That was an achievement. And it was Rick's achievement. Not knowing was the hardest part. He called from Cheyenne from the airport with Ken. And and then I didn't hear anything until Michael Eldridge called from FEMA to say they were in this, this bunker place. But safe. But then, when there was no news, I gave up all hope of ever seeing them again. choose to come back? It's hard to say, really. To face the reality of what nearly happened, I suppose. How close we actually came to never leaving this place at all. We were picked up in Cheyenne. And when the ash finally stopped falling, we were transported to Denver. Where we waited with thousands of others for our turn to be rescued. It would be three months until the transatlantic routes opened up again and I made it back to my family in England. But I soon realized I couldn't stay there. Not until I'd seen for myself what had happened to Yellowstone. The place I'd spent my whole life trying to understand. Things will get better. They will, eventually. Nature will recover. The world will recover. This, after all, is not only how life ends, it's also how life begins. And one day, someday, Yellowstone will erupt again. But not on my watch.